Okay, so here is the second half of the protest documentary contrasting the peaceful day marches. So the specific video footage I'm doing is on Saturday, March 30th. So this is the day after the peaceful day protest. So peaceful day protest was on a Friday. This is Saturday night. Now, generally what these protests are like is pretty much the video that I'm going to be showing you guys. So I showed up around 1130 and I was told by my friend that violence was about to ensue between the police and the protesters. That's the only context I can give you guys as we're about to embark on this cluster of a journey that we have moving forward. So right now it looks like the police are wanting us to leave, but obviously nobody's going to be doing that. I'm not exactly sure why, so I'm going to try to find out here. But so far it looks like they're probably going to use force. Leave, leave the area to the south now. Uh, because they're scared, because it's time to change. And arrest. Bring it! I can't breathe! 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 Now there was a massive empty square to block protesters from the justice center. There was no police near us. They were about 100 meters or so away. This is scary. They're mad that they're getting water balls thrown. This is a civil disturbance and we have declared an unlawful assembly. Leave the area to the south now or you'll be subject to use of force and arrest. So when I filmed this, I wasn't very sure as to what that was, but it turns out that's a rubber bullet. Now I haven't seen one that wasn't getting shot, so it took me by surprise, but I don't know what this guy was doing with this. Now, important note on this is that people weren't hit by these bottles, to the best of my knowledge. Protesters threw random material in the square as essentially an FU to police because they were told not to. But as far as I had personally seen, nobody was hit by these. Yes, sir. How did you get in there? How did I get in here? Yeah. That fence is broken down back there. <laughs> and I'm the only one out here that has the balls to tell them to fuck them. <laughs> Quit throwing shit. We want it to be a peaceful protest. Peaceful. Peaceful doesn't mean I, I see people throwing it's shit, peaceful though. Until we start shooting them. If it's just water bottles, no, it's not It doesn't matter, not to them, though. Yeah, it, it's equal in both ways. It don't matter. It don't matter. It's equal in both ways. If we want to be peaceful, don't be throwing stuff. A water bottle and a bullet are not equal uses of force. I get that. But for to, to them, they know that there's 99% of us and 1% of them fuckers. They don't care. That was an interesting dialogue between the people who wanted it to be completely peaceful and those who were justifying throwing things over into the square. We want peace! We have declared an unlawful we assembly. Want peace. Leave the area to the south now, or you'll be subject to use of force. Now to be fair, I don't know if people were hitting police officers prior to me getting there. What I do know is the amount of violence used against people to follow is scarcely justified. Most of the things that were thrown, if not all that I had seen and I had recorded, was just being thrown into that row. Are they actually hitting anybody? It looks like they're just hitting the floor. Yeah. This is the Portland Police Bureau. This is a civil disturbance that we have declared an unlawful assembly. 
This fence was many feet taller than it was a few days ago. Those are flashbangs, and the people on the right side outside of the camera frame were reportedly shot by various types of munitions as well, from chalk rounds to rubber bullets. department. Keep in mind, every zing you hear is a shot. I'm telling you, man, pussy ass cops, man. Over here, man, we ain't doing shit, man. Look, look, they want to start fucking fires, man. Like, we don't even do this shit. We the peaceful ones, man. The fuck, man? Fuck this shit, man. Now you can't hear it, but right now I was just grabbed by police and they're pushing me with their mace out. As I aimed my camera in their direction, the officer grabbed me and yelled, get away from here, kid, and then let me go. Now, as this happened, protesters in the park were being maced while others were being arrested or shot or a combination of all three. Notice how all the hands are up. I have no clue what's going on. I was sitting down right over here next to the door. Uh, this. So. <laughs> I don't know. 
What you don't see is that in the corner, there's a police officer pointing a gas gun at two girls and me as we were following instructions. He didn't stop until I stopped walking and pointed the camera at him. The officer then spoke to the lady, then kept walking. And that's what you're seeing right here. Hey, what they say? What they say? He was like, why are you doing this shit? I'm like, I'm not doing anything. He's like, yes, you are. I'm like, I'm not. And he's like, then everybody else. It's not everybody else. It doesn't even matter because it doesn't hurt them. They are behind armor. They don't care. They want the power. They want the freedom to kill. At this point, most of us became so used to the flashbangs that I was ineffective. Though there were protesters throwing firecrackers as well that sounded very similar. <laughs> Do you know why they're using force? No. Did they There's use stuff, force but it was you? like pepper, like water bottles mm -hmm. over the fence. That was it. Gotcha. Yeah. Where are they pushing everybody? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. They keep driving around. So where are you going now? Like You're just walking, walking around. Like We're just gonna walk around. All right. See where it leads us. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> So the police were pushing everybody one way, then going around to the opposite end where they're telling people to go and then cutting them off and telling them to go the opposite way while arresting everybody. Eventually I decided to ask them where exactly do they want us to go? And there's a cameraman next to me as well. And they pull out their baton to hit that cameraman. And then I pointed the camera at them and then he puts his baton away and he tells me to go the way that I'm currently going. So we'll see what happens. After ultimately pushing protesters to a location about half a mile away, they regrouped and stopped harassing people walking around like myself. So overall, what do we take away from this? Well, certainly there are two sides to every coin. You have the peaceful day protests versus the violent night protests. And my goal here is essentially to demonstrate the differences between the two as a way to be able to understand the realities of the situation, because ultimately nobody really knows how this is going to play out or what will come from this. Though we do know in order to achieve lasting peace, we have to address the policy process. So for example, why aren't body cameras nationally enforced? Or what happens if a police officer shuts off their body camera? in order to deter negligence either intentionally or unintentionally. And finally, let's examine the civil immunities that police officers have that prevents them from being punished for violating another human being's civil liberties. So with time, these policies will be addressed, but not because somebody else will ensure that it does, but rather because we will. Until this moment comes when policy changes, there is no justice and there is no peace. Thank you.